The White House has been the resident and the workplace of the United States presidents, it has housed 45 presidents as of 2023. A presidency tenure is four years, after which the president can be re-elected. But, there's some United States presidents, who didn't finish their four years tenure, due to one reason or the other, to the extent that they were barely able to fulfill their duties. Here is a list of 10 shortest presidencies in U.S. history. If you love this kind of videos, please subscribe to this channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Let's go into the video. 10. John Tyler John Tyler served the remainder of William Harrison's term. He was denied renomination by the Whigs. Tyler flirted with the Liberty Party, but was persuaded not to run by the Democrats, his former party. In his time, Tyler's presidency was not really taken seriously, he was usually referred to as the acting president or his accidency by opponents. In addition, Tyler had fallen at odds with his former policy supporters. His tenure was from April 4, 1841 to March 4, 1845. 9. Andrew Johnson Andrew Johnson served the remainder of Abraham Lincoln's term. In 1868, he tried to win the Democratic nomination but lost. Johnson's party status was unclear. During his presidency, he tried to form a party of loyalists under the National Union flag, but he did not identify with either of the two main parties, although he did try to win the Democratic nomination in 1868. He was asked in 1868 why he did not become a Democrat and he replied, it is true that they ask me why I do not join the Democratic Party. Why don't they join me, if I have administered the office of president so well? Andrew's tenure was from April 15, 1865 to March 4, 1869. 8. Chester A. Arthur Chester A. Arthur served the remainder of James Garfield's term. He sought a full term, but was not renominated. The first federal immigration law was put in place by the Arthur administration. In 1882, Arthur adopted a measure to ban paupers, criminals, and the mentally ill people. In addition, with the Chinese Exclusion Act, Congress suspended Chinese immigration for 10 years, making the ban permanent. Arthur's tenure was from September 19, 1881 to March 4, 1885. 7. John F. Kennedy John F. Kennedy was assassinated in his first term. At noon on January 20, 1961, John F. Kennedy took his oath of office as the 35th President of the United States. He spoke of the need for all Americans to be active citizens in his inaugural address, famously saying, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. In addition, he called on the world's nations to fight what he described as mankind's common enemies, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. John Kennedy's tenure was from January 20, 1961 to November 22, 1963. 6. Millard Fillmore Millard served the remainder of Zachary Taylor's term. In 1852, he sought the nomination of the Whigs, but lost to Winfield Scott. He ran again, as a know-nothing, and came in third, four years later. As president, Fillmore dealt with increasing party divisions within the Whig Party, party harmony became one of his primary objectives. He tried to unite the party by pointing out the differences between the Whigs and the Democrats, by proposing tariff reforms that negatively reflected on the Democratic Party. To keep the Union from an increasing slavery debate was another important objective of Fillmore. Fillmore's tenure was from July 9, 1850 to March 4, 1853. 5. Gerald Ford Gerald Ford served the remainder of Richard Nixon's term. He was not elected for full term. In foreign policy, the Helsinki Accords marked a move toward détente in the Cold War. Even as the former ally South Vietnam was invaded and conquered by North Vietnam, Ford did not intervene, but did help extract friends of the U.S. 
At home, the economy suffered from inflation and recession. Ford came under intense criticism for granting a preemptive pardon to President Richard Nixon for his role in the Watergate scandal. Gerald's tenure was from August 9, 1974 to January 20, 1977. 4. Warren G. Harding Warren G. Harding died in his first term. In April 1921, speaking before a joint session of Congress he called for peacemaking with Germany and Austria, emergency tariffs, new immigration laws, regulation of radio and trans cable communications retrenchment in government, tax reduction, repeal of wartime excess profits tax, reduction of railroad rates, promotion of agricultural interests, a national budget system, a great merchant marine and a department of public welfare. Warren's tenure was from March 4, 1921 to August 2, 1923. 3. Zachary Taylor Zachary Taylor died during his first term. He didn't take the oath of office until March 5, 1849, because March 4 fell on a Sunday, and Taylor didn't take the oath of office because of his religious beliefs. Taylor's brief term was dominated by the issues of slavery. Although he owned slaves, he took a moderate stance on the territorial expansion of slavery, angering fellow Southerners. Taylor urged settlers in New Mexico and California to draft constitutions and apply for statehood, bypassing the territorial stage. New Mexico was too small to act, but California which had high population growth from the gold rush, wrote a constitution that did not allow slavery, it was approved by the voters, and a new state government took over in December 1849 without congressional approval. Zachary's tenure was from March 4, 1849 to July 9, 1850. 2. James A. Garfield James A. Garfield was assassinated within less than a year of his first term. Between his election and his inauguration, Garfield was occupied with constructing a cabinet that would balance all Republican factions. He was shot by Charles Julius Coutel, disgruntled by failed efforts to secure a federal post, on July 2, 1881, at 9.30 a.m., less than four months after taking office. Garfield's tenure was from March 4, 1881 to September 19, 1881. 1. William Henry Harrison William Henry Harrison died within a month of his first term. Harrison only had time for one official act, which was, calling Congress into a special session, which he set to begin on May 31, 1841. Harrison and Whig's leader, Henry Clay, disagreed about the necessity of a special session, which Harrison opposed, but Clay wanted to get his economic agenda up and running immediately. Clay's powerful position, in both the legislature and the Whigs party forced Harrison to give in. He was the first president to die in office. Harrison's tenure was from March 4, 1841 to April 4, 1841. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.